blood. Everyone has it, but there's a lot you may not know about it. On average, the human body houses about two gallons of blood. That's about four liter-sized soda bottles, just for reference. A healthy heart also pumps 7,000 liters of blood every day, so those two gallons are constantly being refreshed and replenished to help your body work. Indeed, we have plenty of blood to go around, but unfortunately, some of us aren't as lucky. Many people, such as victims of natural disasters, amputees, and patients with cancer and other diseases, are unable to produce enough healthy blood on their own to survive. That's why the American Red Cross has regular blood drives across the country, and they need your help. Now for those of you who haven't donated blood before, you may have a few questions. Well, I think it's time to take a page out of any journalistic handbook and take a look at the who, what, when, where, why, and how questions that one may ask before donating blood for the first time. Recently, I was fortunate enough to speak to Paul Lay of the American Red Cross chapter in Wallingford, Connecticut. Here's what he had to say. Question 1. Why is giving blood important? The only way for us to use blood is to capture it from another human being. So we constantly hold blood drives. So there's no way to manufacture it. The only way to get it is to hold a blood drive and draw blood from uh, willing donors. The shelf life of blood is anywhere from 5 days to like the 42 days for red blood to up to a year for plasma. So it's such we're constantly doing blood drives. Question 2. What steps should I take before donating blood? There is some preparation that a person should do. More importantly is they should eat, not fast. They should hydrate the bubble, specifically for, uh, with water, because water helps with hydration. It makes the veins a little bit bigger, makes the blood flow. Coffee, caffeine-related drinks slow down blood flow, constrict the blood flow, so we have to be away from that. Question 3. How does the donation process work? The day of the is four steps that we go through for all donations. The process is the same every single time because we are a PA regulated environment. The steps are registration, where you sign in, read the free materials, health history, where we start medical history, temperature, blood pressure, don't hit the of you to check your uh, iron level, and then they ask you about 40 questions. Once you've completed that, step three is you proceed to the donation. To help demonstrate this step, I decided to pay the New Haven Red Cross a visit and participate in a blood drive myself. Alright, here I go. <laughs> First, a volunteer gives you a red ball to squeeze. This helps your vein stick out from your arm giving the volunteer better access. Next, the volunteer marks down where your vein is with a marker, letting her know where the needle will go. Next, the volunteer rubs the injection area with iodine to help clean the arm before the needle is put in. Everybody has uh, microscopic germs on their skin, and so we have to kill as many as we can. Cool. So, the first scrub, we do like a three by three area and it's just like a random, all different ways in that area. We'll do that for 30 seconds. And in this one, we go to the point where we're gonna insert the needle and we do concentric circles away from that site. So anything that might be left there is gonna be pushed away from that, the site. Hmm. It's against policy to show the needle going in in a video. So don't worry if you're squeamish. I'm not going to show the needle going into my arm. Once the needle is inserted, your blood will be drawn for 10 minutes, and a one pint bag will be filled below the table. It is important to keep squeezing the ball during this process. That keeps the blood flowing. Once the bag is filled, you'll be given a bandage and taken to the refreshment table. At that point in time, you proceed over the canteen we provide water, juice, some snacks, etc. And then your process is complete. Question 4. Who will benefit from my blood donation? As stated before, 
Many patients will benefit from blood donations since they cannot make enough healthy blood on their own to survive. Hi, my name is Jason. My donation story began about five years ago when my then four-year-old daughter Sophia was diagnosed with cancer in both kidneys. During her treatment, it became obvious to me that the cancer patients are critically reliant on blood products donated by people through organizations such as the Red Cross. It was at that point that I decided to become much more active and involved from a phoresis donation standpoint, not only to pay back the supply that my daughter received, but also to continue to help people um, in similar situations for years to come. Other patients include Marquita, a young woman suffering from sickle cell anemia, Greg, an amputee who lost his arm in Iraq, Gavin, an 8-year-old boy born with a fast-growing tumor, and Madeline, a 6-year-old girl suffering from neuroblastoma. All of these people owe their lives to blood donors, and you can be one too. Which brings us to our last two questions. Questions 5 and 6. Where can I donate, and when can I donate? Answering these questions is rather simple. All you have to do is go onto the American Red Cross's website and type in your zip code. This will take you to a page that lists all of the upcoming blood drives that the Red Cross is hosting. This page will give you the distance, date, time, location, and details of the blood drive that you wish to attend. I hope this video has answered any questions that you may have had about donating blood for the first time. To find out more information and to see if you are eligible for a blood drive, go to redcrossblood.org.